So this video is following up from another video we did for the Facebook channel and obviously the Facebook channel videos don't transfer well across to YouTube but we can transfer the YouTube videos across to the Facebook channel. So we thought we'd redo it again and this is covering the topic of shot at relays used in railroad signalling. So here we have a few examples of shell tap relays. We have our standard shell tap relay called the shell tap relay because primarily they sat on a shelf originally. And there are various versions of these. We also have a polarised relay I'll get to in a minute. So we'll start with the standard shell tap relay. Standard shell tap relay has multiple terminals for putting a wire on. These are OBA terminals. So your wires are crimped and put onto these terminals. And traditionally, like any relay, you have a set of contacts inside. When you energise a coil, so say for instance if this was a track, if the track was clear, the coil would be energised on these two wires here. This relay would energise, this armature inside would be energised upwards and make a set of front contacts, as we call them, front and back contacts, or energised and not energised, made and not made contacts. And the reason that they're laid out in these nice, neat rows isn't just for aesthetic value. These here are our number one set of contacts. So these contacts you can see directly here. Then our number two set, three set, four set, five set, and six set. So this is a six armature front contact and back contact relay. This top here is a later design to make things a lot easier. If you look on this shelf tap relay here, you'll see there's no kind of plug coupler on top of it. So if you had to change this relay, you'd have to dewire it all. And that would make a lot of time and a lot of testing. So the idea for this Remax top, as it's called, is to make life a lot easier. You just unscrew this single OBA terminal on the front and you can slide the whole block out. You can just see these small little uh, catch pins here. It slides out and lifts off. You don't have to dewire it then, which makes life a lot easier. It's down to a few minutes changing the relay. But more importantly, testing wise, you're not having to remove any wires. So you're not having to do correlation checks and everything to make sure it's all gone back on. It's hardwired at the, uh, the factory from the top to the bottom. And these have a pin code on them. The same as all relays have a pin code, technically to make sure that they are the correct relays you're installing. Even shelf tap relays have pin codes. And we'll get into this more in a minute when you see the, uh, the plug-in 930 series relays. But as you can see here, there's a series of small pre-drilled holes on the front, or marks for holes. And at the factory, they will pre-drill some of these out and put a pin in. It's like a rivet pin. It's fixed in, and that defines the pin code. Traditionally, there's a small plastic plate on here that also gives you that serial number of the pin code. I'll give you this one here, and just see it there. And that defines the pin code. Now, even on this one, there is a pin code. As you'll note, this one has a Remax top on it as well. It's just down here. And what you have is a Bakelite screw there, flat the screw. Later ones um, do have steel ones. These Bakelite ones, they were well known. If you've sat on the shelf for about 10, 15 years, they just seize in. So later ones do have a, a, a different make of uh, screw there to get that off. And quite simply, this just comes off again and unplugs and you put your new relay in. So going back to our traditional shell tap relay, you'll see it's operating in a minute. These are our coils, cloth wrapped, resin bound. And on most coils, you will have a soft iron yoke across the top. So your voltage will come in on our, say our Remax top terminal, will go across to one coil and then That'll go through a centre stud, which is this. You can just see here, and just probably make that out there. That's our centre stud, and then across to our other one and down. They are capable of working on one coil. If they fail, if one coil fails, it is capable of working on one coil. And an old trick that they used to do, we don't do anymore, but an old trick they used to do, if a coil failed, you would strap out that centre terminal to the, past the failed coil, and it would work. Now. On line relays, this relay, which I'll explain in a minute, that's probably quite fine. On track relays, it does affect the operation of the track relay. But well, that's one of the old get-outs they used to do when relays failed, because these are worth quite a lot of money to get replaced. So 
you obviously want to keep it in service as long as possible. On the side, it will give you some details. It will give you the resistance of the coils, total resistance, and it will give you the pickup voltage and a drop away voltage. And I'll explain that in a minute when you see this operating. The pickup voltage is the voltage at which it will finally pick. The drop away voltage is the voltage at which it will finally disengage and drop away. It is a momentary action because you do not want the front contacts and the back contacts made at exactly the same time. Otherwise, you could false feed some circuits and you don't want that. And there's a slight springiness in the armature as well. So you'll see it when we try it, it it'll suddenly pick. And then if we drop the voltage away, it will eventually just lose enough voltage to hold its magnetic field and then drop away. You'll notice this one has a red band across the top there. Now that is quite important. This one doesn't. Trap relays and other relays such as this lamp proving relay, they're all designed to work at different voltages. However, these are all low voltages, low currents. This relay is a, a line relay. That red band means that it can be used off, say, 12 volt interlocking. So if I was going to design a signal box, some of these circuits would be out in the cupboards, lamp proving, etc. Doing, uh, doing the circuits that they were designed to do. But that the actual interlocking, because that's run off a local battery or a local supply feed, these want to be run off a high, slightly higher voltage. So these are, in effect, the interlocking relays. So these can be run off 8 to 12 volts, a little higher. You don't want to go anywhere near 24 volts on these. You'll saturate the coils so that they are magnetically stuck up. Um, we used to use the terminology one and a half times the pickup voltage. So if you're working with a track relay, you don't want the voltage to go one and a half times over. Otherwise, you start to permanently magnetise the coils. Um, you get a lot of the 930 series plug-in relays with a, a maximum voltage setting on it. That's there for a reason. You don't want to permanently magnetise these. As with all heritage railways that end up getting a lot of second-hand equipment, some of it's refurbished, some of it's quite old. That shell tap really there is quite old. It's not been refurbished. They have <coughs> slight things you need to look out for. These Remax tops tend to never be taken off. When you unscrew this Remax top to get this off, there is a set of wiping contacts inside, almost brass wiping contacts, copperish wiping contacts, and you may get a bit of verdigris in there. Um, I can show you that again in a minute. Other things is broken or loose fittings on it. Um, these are renowned for shearing off just inside there, and that is a process of age, electrical conductivity, and the actual chemicals in the metal. They tend to shear off just under here. There's a small uh, castellated uh, nut or screw that, that shears off, and it falls down inside, and it renders a relay out of use. You have to send it away for repair. They are sealed, they have four, four screws in on the corners, so this top does come off, and there's one of them sealed with like a, a, a resin seal in it from the manufacturers. You'll notice this one's got a little bit of dampness in it over time, and a little bit of verdigris there on the, uh, the magnetic plate of the armature, but it's not affecting it. Everything else inside, they're all dissimilar metals, um, so they can't weld together, and you'll see one of the plug-in relays later that's got uh, high heavy duty contacts on it, so it's for high voltage shifting. These don't don't shift much voltage, but they have carbon blocks and then um, silvered metal contacts, so you can't weld them together. That's the nut I was mentioning that has a tendency to shear off inside. It's a 2BA screw that goes up into this. These are recessed, and I have known these in the past. When they snap off, they've been re uh, re drilled re-tapped in there and a 2BA nut has been put back in there to repair it. Um, that was the, the days of the past, but you can get these reserviced at any of the major manufacturers. A good standard case, Bakelite case on these with a glass or plastic side. Um, these tend to suffer in storage. Um, the glass does get broken. It does have a small seal, foam seal around it, which is quite important to keep the moisture out. Some of these, as you see on the LMS relay, I'll show you in a minute, they actually have breathing holes on them because of the amount of current you shift through them, you can get damp in there. Now then, as I mentioned, this shelf type relay, much older one, is a current sensing, uh, a current sensing relay for a lamp proving circuit. Hence why on this one, it's actually had a small wire wound coil put on the back of it. This acts as a resistance. 
And what will happen here, some of the voltage that actually drives the relay, uh, sorry, some of the voltage that drives the lamp is borrowed away to drive the relay. And this will have been a DC circuit because there's no rectifiers on it. There are plug-in versions of this that have AC rectifiers in. So you can take a little bit of the voltage for the lamp, turn it into uh, a DC voltage. You can use this, uh, this shunt or resistor to take the necessary amount of current to just keep the relay working. And that way you can set it so when the lamp fails, it will drop out and warn the signal that the lamp has failed. Now, the last one in the Polarized series I'd like to show you is this one. This is a Polar uh, polarized relay. These relays, as you can appreciate, these are neutral relays. All these do when you apply voltage to them is their contacts energize. And when you take the voltage away, they de-energize. So they go up and down, they make and break. This one's a little different. <clears throat> this one works with a magnetic field. And I'll show you in a minute. There's three ways this can work. The first way is you take the power off and it automatically fails back to its sprung loaded position. You'll notice it's, it's actually got like a spring inside that returns it. The second way is you apply the wrong polarity to this. So if, for instance, if you put positive and negative the wrong way on the terminals R1 and R2, what would happen there is the contact would simply just bend further into its wrong position. It wouldn't make. Or the third way is you apply the correct polarity, correct positive and negative to the R1 and R2 terminals. And only then will the contact go over and make the contact that you want. Now on this one, you'll notice it's got an R1, R2 for the coils, and it's got an armature, and it's got a normal and a reverse contact on that. Um, so these tend to be used in block circuits where polarity drives the blocks one way or the other, gives you a line clear indication or a train on line indication. And it's quite important that you only have the relay picking with the correct line clear indication as such. Um, and that's why we use these. There are, two contact versions of these in a nice square case. These tend to be used for, uh, like I say, block proving and stuff. If you have the two contact version of these in the square cases, they tend to be used for signal <coughs> repeating. So in a contact box with a signal, you will switch around the contacts there. That will drive the relay and then it will give a, a double polarity output back to the signal box. So it will switch the positive and the negative lines back on that polarity change uh, circuits back to the signal box and that's a different version of that. Now this relay is the last one we'll look at in the shelf type series. This one combines all the benefits of a neutral relay with its vertical horizontal contacts you can see there's four of them here together with the polar operation of the polar relay again these sets on the left and the right being the polar contacts and the benefit of this relay is that say for instance you had roots set and then there was a power failure or you had point detection set and then there was a power failure when the power comes back on the relay won't be in a position where it is de-latched itself or dropped out and doesn't know exactly what state it should be in again. So if you had roots that were previously set before you had a power failure, those roots will remain locked in. And that's the benefit of this relay. It remembers where it was when the power comes back on. Now, same again, Remax tops. So you don't have to dewire every single thing when you're changing it. Pin codes upon those Remax tops. Again, you can't get the right on the left and the left on the right because the pin codes are opposite diametrically opposite. Standard contacts on the bottom, transferred up onto the remaxes on the top. Four coils, so as you notice we have our standard coils connected by our soft iron yoke. We also have a third polarised coil in the middle there as part of that. And for the relay to operate, it not only has to make the neutral contacts but also the polar contacts. So in effect, the armature will rock and pick, drop and rock, rock to the opposite line and pick. And that's the internal operation of it. We call them fish tank relays for the obvious reason. They look like a giant fish tank. 
Again, 1,000 ohm line relays, so you can use them off a 12 volt local interlocking. Uh, they have a saturation of roughly one and a half times. So same as a, a normal neutral relay. If you went up to about 24 volts, you'd start to saturate this. They'll start to work at about five volts. And contact wise, you need the wiring diagram for these. It's not as standard as it looks. So on a normal neutral relay, this would be set number one, two, three, and four. And you'd have say front, back and arm or arm, back and front. Um, on these, it's very slightly different. These have the armatures over on the right hand side and the fronts and backs on the left. And then there's also normals and reverse contacts as well, depending on where they are. It's not too easy to see on this. Um, on the relay itself, on the actual base, it's much easier. All the, uh, all the armature ones there. So we've got one to four arm on the back. Then we've got five and six arm. Our twos there, our ones over, I've lost it down there somewhere. So you need the wiring diagram if you're gonna work on this, because you also need to know the paths through. Because bear in mind, every path through goes through a neutral and then a polarized output as well. Um, if I can find a copy of the wiring diagram and include that, that might make life a little bit easier. On the back, there's far more room. It's a lovely designed little relay. Quite big and heavy though. Um, there is a nice display of the braidings that connect from the armatures up to the contacts. Again, all OBA terminals. Not too many of these knocking around anymore. Um, where you have tend to have one of these it tends to be for saving on cabling um, we have one here on one of our point detectors down on the bridge that saves on all circuits coming all the way back um, but again if we'd had spare cabling we could have done it with two separate relays um, but so it just saves a relay but again it depends on whether you have spares for these we have a couple of spares for these because we use these and we need these so we've always got these in place so that is the polar neutral relay